Today, we're going to be talking about the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, otherwise called VEDS. I'm going to be discussing five things that you need to know about vascular EBS. Hello, my name is Dr. Claire Francamato, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorders. The Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes in general are hereditary disorders of connective tissue, but in vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, this connective tissue involvement particularly affects the connective tissue of the blood vessels. and specifically the medium-sized vessels that we see in the abdominal cavity, such as the gastric artery, the splenic artery, and the hepatic artery, are the most vulnerable in this condition. So what we see in these blood vessels is they can develop aneurysms, dissections, and rupture of the blood vessels causing internal bleeding. And these events can be life-threatening. The other organs that are involved in the vascular type of EDS are the hollow organs like the gastrointestinal tract and the bladder and the uterus. And sometimes we can see rupture of these organs in VEDS as well. So it's not just the vascular tree, but also the organs of the gastrointestinal tract, the bladder, and the uterus that can be vulnerable to rupture in VEDS. The third thing that we can see in VEDS is pneumothorax, which means a collapsed lung. For no particular reason, the lung may just separate out from the wall of the chest cavity and collapse, and then it's not able to aerate properly. So a pneumothorax can cause shortness of breath and may require the insertion of something called a chest tube to help reinflate the lung. And a pneumothorax is one of the things that we can also see in vascular type of EDS. A fourth thing that sometimes happens in people with VEDS is they tell us that they sleep with their eyes open. Actually, it is usually a family member that'll say, yeah, they sleep, they don't completely close their eyes. So that can be a clue towards the diagnosis of vascular EDS. And the fifth feature that is sometimes seen is an attached earlobe. So the earlobe is not hanging down with a nice good place for the earring to be attached, but is rather attached directly to the face. So attached earlobes, sleeping with the eyes open, pneumothorax or a collapsed lung, and fragility of the hollow organs and the vascular tree. Those are five things that may point us towards a diagnosis of vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Now, it's also important to remember that we have to think about the family history. So if there is a family history of individuals who have died unexpectedly, suddenly, especially at a young age, usually we think about less than 40, this is another kind of red flag that would make us think, is it possible? that we could have vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome in this family. And it's very important that we keep the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome on the differential diagnosis and look into the possible occurrence of a variant in the COL3A1 gene because identifying the diagnosis and making sure that we are aware that this is the diagnosis in a particular person can have life safe benefits down the road. So this is a summary, the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Thank you very much for listening today. And if you're interested in more information about the different types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and how to make the diagnosis of generalized joint hypermobility, you might check out the earlier videos that were on that subject.